Welcome to RSA Conference 2024. We're here recording live from Broadcast Alley in Moscone West. This interview is sponsored by Semperis. 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 I'm your host, Adrian Sanabri, and joining me today for this interview is Jim Doggett, the CISO at Semperis. Thank you so much, Adrian. Thanks for joining me. Oh, it's a pleasure. So talking about CISOs today. Yes. That's what we're talking about. Um, so the evolving role of, this, uh, role of the CISO in the business of cyber is the, uh, the headline we have here. And it's, uh, it's been a really interesting role over the years, right? You know, it's, yeah. uh, and, and it still continues to be. It, it's, uh, I think, probably one of the most versatile roles, roles or, or wide roles, depending on the company. Like a CISO at a vendor uh, can be very different than a, a CISO at a, uh, you know, maybe a retail company or something like that, or a CISO at a yeah. small company versus a big company. Um, you know, for, for you, uh, you know, what, what, um, where, where do you, where do you see this role going? You okay. know, where, where is, um, you know, and it, maybe a little insight on, on, uh, the trajectory in your experience. Absolutely. And again, I, I, I probably need to go back just a little bit of history. Yeah, I've, yeah. I've been doing this a long time and yeah, I completely agree with you. The evolution of the role has been. Actually, not even small. It's dramatic. Um, yeah. it, when I first started, it was a largely a CISO role was largely purely a technical role. Yeah, yeah. You worked under a CIO typically, and your job was to just do security and not report on it, not try to understand how it affects the business. You were just purely there. You found something that was wrong. You wanted to fix it. Yeah. And then as we started to evolve, all of a sudden – we don't have enough budget to do it all. So then yeah. all of a sudden risk got added into that equation a bit. Yeah. So all of a sudden you have to balance. We can't do everything. So now we put together plans yeah. and we'd risk base them and then try to sell them to the board and the senior management. And we sort of made it to that next level. And that brings us up to where we almost are today. But I think now it's taken the next step where the CISO role is almost becoming a business role. Yeah. You're now not, uh, again, I, the last role I held at a large corporation as a CISO, I did no technical work at all. Yeah. Uh, my, it was a political role. It was a selling role. Yeah. But I spent all of my time trying to understand what the business was trying to do and then where I had, to, where from a security we could support that business as yeah. opposed to, you know, guard, putting guardrails around and not letting them do that. So to me, it's very different and it does require a different skill set. I mean, uh, you have to learn at the the CISO level now is how do I explain things purely in e English or non right. in business terms? And that just, uh, that's not easy to do. And it's a very different role. And politically you're playing, I hate to call it games, but it sort of is. Yeah. You're spending all your time saying, well, I need you to do this. I'll do this for you. And it becomes a, almost a game at that point. And all at the same time, you still didn't have that team below that you got to get all the technical work done. Right, right. So it's it, it's the evolution has been really fascinating to me, and it's a, it's actually more fun now. And it, it's not evolved in a vacuum either. The importance of cybersecurity to the business has increased quite a bit as this Absolutely. role has evolved, right? No, it is. Uh, and it's not only has it evolved, but also I think the recognition yeah. by the, the boards and the companies that it is that important is finally grown. And again, you can hate or not hate, but it all these major cyber incidents are what's causing this. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a there's a good you take advantage of for every. A lot of people say thanks to ransomware for, <laughs> you know. No, in our company especially, yeah. that is. I, I would if it wasn't for ransomware, I would not have joined probably Semperus. Really. I grew up in a world where, and again, Semperus is into Active Directory. I grew up in a world where, I didn't worry about Active Directory. Yeah. It was just a piece of uh, infrastructure that worked and I never thought about it. Right. That evolved over time to now if uh, that infrastructure goes down and the whole company goes down. Yeah. Yeah. So. And uh, the, you know the CISO role you know I think uh, another thing that we used to see is uh, somebody maybe down at a director level would get the CISO role. You know and again that's that's another thing that's evolved where you know we, we do actually see uh, CISO roles at the executive level now more often. Yep, and uh, you know, like you said, uh, more more of that business uh, enablement role. Um, so yeah, what you know, let's talk about that a little bit. You know, okay. you, you mentioned political, but you know, how how can the CISO role 
help the business? How can it be uh, less of uh, like a loss prevention or, or uh, right. uh, uh, fraud group, you know, more, you know, assisting sales, assisting uh, the, the company grow and sell more? Yeah, that's, to me, it's, I, would, I would characterize it almost as enablement. In other words, if you can take away a risk that something bad will happen, right. then hopefully then the business has the confidence to take risks and head in new directions right. to grow the business. If you're worried about security the whole time and that something may go wrong, then all of a sudden you're not doing that. Yeah. Um, a good air, a good con probably the best example I can give of that would be resiliency today. Mm -hmm. And again, historically, CISOs didn't worry about keeping the business going. They worried about theft of data. Right. And that we don't, now you've got ransomware where the resiliency and keeping the business operating is big. That is a d huge issue to, again, I don't care which business unit you go to within a company, they all care about that. Yeah. Especially when you think about, you know, uh, let's take a hospital or a, a healthcare chain. If the resiliency doesn't work and you get an outage, how do doctors actually prescribe? How do they yeah. treat patients? How do they do surgeries without all that data? And yeah. my, my time there in the healthcare, where the doctors I talked to said the only surgery they would do if their systems were down would be emergency surgery, nothing else. Yeah. Liability's too high. And that's interesting because we, you know, we've seen uh, sometimes uh, business continuity is part of the security team. Yep. And, and sometimes it's under operations, it's, it's separate. So do you feel like today it's, it's important that business continuity, disaster recovery, all that should be under under the CISO? I don't think it necessarily needs to be under it, but the CISO has to include resiliency right. from a cyber attack as one of their key functions. And I'd even make a case today, it is the most important function they have. Yeah. If someone breaks in and steals data, that hurts. Right. Someone breaks in and shuts the business down. Shuts the business down. It's a lot worse. That's when you get fired and sued. And yeah. there's plenty of great examples to go out in the right now and see that's happening between solar winds and yeah, you go on and on there. So, yeah, I think it's absolutely an area that, again, I don't, most CISOs were not trained in the space. They were preventing, detecting, and fixing, but not recovery. Right. And recovery is what it's all about right now. And uh, so I, I've got a good friend who's actually, uh, he's at a point in his career where he's looking at his first CISO role. Okay. And he's he's basically done the job of a CISO before. Uh, and, and I know you've you've mentored uh, CISO, CISOs before. So in 2024, uh, what, what advice would you give him uh, going after ta tackling the yeah. CISO role today? Um, first of all, think in terms of what helps the business first. You start with that as the problem. What do I want trying to accomplish? Yeah. Then you take. So you need to understand the business really. If well. you don't understand the business, I don't know how you can do the job today. Yeah. I completely agree. The second aspect, though, from a business perspective, is you've got to comp learn to compromise. Mm. Yeah. Historically, CISOs and people that came from a technical world, yeah. there's a right, a wrong, and no yeah. gray in the middle. <laughs> And you've got to I, learn a whole lot of great. I've known some, yeah. <laughs> yeah and I, I've replaced several. That have, That's how yeah. I got hired as a CISO because they could not. Inflexible. Yeah, and you yeah. can't be that. Uh, and ultimately, you've got to remember that security, 90% of security is not done by the security team. Right. It's done by the business. Yeah. All you do is you advise, advise do policy, and monitor. Yeah. You don't actually do the security in general. So, yeah. And uh, just looking ahead, uh, what, what kind of emerging trends or challenges do you see um, integrating cybersecurity with business strategy? Uh, and, and how should CISOs prepare for some of these challenges? Yeah, I, to me, it's a pace acceleration. And again, everyone wants to talk about AI today. Mm -hmm. um, to me, that is, it's just another tool. Right. But it's a tool that accelerates good and bad. So you, right. it, it's not something we can't ignore. But I advise so many, again, it, it, a good example is that AI today is like a shiny ball. Everyone's sort of driven to it. But don't forget the basics still. And that's the problem I think too many companies are doing now is they're chasing the sh shiny ball, and yet they're still not patching their systems and doing yeah. the basics, which you have to still do. So that balance I would recommend for CISOs coming up now, you have to reach a balance of that. Yes, you can't ignore AI. Yeah. So to me, that will certainly be a trend. Machine learning, you can go through all of these things. The other aspect that I think that all CISOs have to focus on is identity. 
Uh, right. You just don't have a choice today because with our perimeter almost gone, there is no network perimeter anymore. With cloud, with yeah. vendors coming in and customers coming in, you have no perimeter anymore. So the only way you need to make sure that whoever is logging in as John Jones is John Jones. Right. And they have the right privileges. And that is, to me, the next wave of all the software that's got to come out and all the tools that have to be out there is how do we make sure whoever's doing work on our behalf is the person they're doing and they're doing the right things. Right. Yeah, I just talked to a, a CISO uh, a couple minutes ago before we, we started uh, this interview. Yeah. Uh, you know, he uh, works for a large investment bank and they're already using generative AI. And he's he's here looking for solutions to, to help secure yeah. uh, their, their use for it. So, you know, I mean, it, it seems like some of the compromise you're talking about where, uh, you know, you're, you're not going to be able to get ahead of it necessarily. You do what you can, but, you know, you can't stand in the way of the, what the business needs to do or wants to do now, a lot of the time. We learned so much from cloud. To me, this and cloud are the same kind yeah. of head rate. We went through cloud. We fought it forever. Oh, yeah. uh, you can say what you want, but I mean, almost every large company out there and even a lot of small ones said, we're not ever going to go there. Yeah. It was inevitable. And yeah. there's no doubt and to SAS me. And SaaS before that. Right? Yeah, and you yeah. just keep going. There's going to be no difference here. The only thing is cloud was like a 10-year runway before it became acceptable. Right. I think AI is going to be <laughs> two, two, two <laughs> yeah. three. It's well, going to be yeah. something a little different. But nevertheless, you can't fight it. Yeah. As a CISO, you've got to learn how do I – help the company use it to its best ability. And here at Semperis, what we've just done is put guardrails for the time being. Here's where what you can put in, you can use it, but you need to talk about it before you start using it. And what data are you going to put in there? Are you putting confidential data that we don't want in there or not? And there's things like that. that so we're just taking a practical approach right now, but over time it will have to accelerate. Yeah. Yep. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining oh. us on uh, Enterprise Security, or sorry, Security Weekly. My podcast is Enterprise Security Weekly. <laughs> Good one as well. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, pleasure, Adrian. Uh, yeah, thank you. Very nice to uh, talk with you. And if you want to learn more about uh, Sempris, you can go to securityweekly.com forward slash Sempris, and that's spelled S-E-M-P-E-R-I-S-R-S-A-C. So, Sempris R-S-A-C. Perfect. And stick around. Uh, we'll be back at you with uh, another interview in just a few minutes.